quick and clear video of how to use Google and Zoom to get started with online teaching. There are a few things that I want to cover. One, I just want to show you how to actually schedule a class on Google Calendar. I want to give you a little bit of a comparison between Google and Zoom. And I also want to show you how to teach with Zoom. So what are some of the features inside the program and how to get started with them? If I come over to Google Calendar, it gives me on the week view, some overview of my week like this. Now, if I click on a section of my calendar, it's going to make an event. I'm going to call it Zoom meeting. And it's going to give me options um, for adding guests. Um, it's also going to give me options for adding a location or conferencing. And so if I go down to conferencing, my computer gives me an option to pick Hangouts or a Zoom meeting. Your computer won't give you that option. It should just have a drop-down box for Google Hangouts if you've never used Zoom before. And this is the URL. So if you're right now trying to just follow along, type in zoom.us at the top of your address bar and just go to this website. For you, it's going to come up to this page. This is what your page is going to look like. And you're going to click right over here, sign up. It's free. If I log in, I'm going to get this screen and there's a side over here. It says personal and then it says meetings. And before we really compare Zoom and Google Hangouts, let's just make sure that we can get both of those to show up in Google Calendar. So download the Chrome extension for Zoom. So click here on download and it'll take you to the Chrome web store. And for you right here, it's going to say add to Chrome or install. And you're going to click on that. You're going to go through all the different menu options. You might have to give some access for the Chrome browser. And so you're going to do that and go back to Zoom website. And let's start comparing these. I actually wanted to, when I started making this video, I wanted to say, just use Google Hangouts, just use Google Meet because it's part of the Google suite. Um, it has all those apps that I like using anyway, and it's already integrated. You don't have to download a Chrome extension. If you are trying to simply do a video call with multiple people and maybe share your screen, then Google Hangouts and Meet work totally fine. If you want all the features for teaching, then you're going to be wanting to use Zoom. Back here, we've now got Zoom. I've gone through a bit of a comparison and tried to sum it up for you so you don't spend all the time I spent trying to figure out the difference. And now we're back at scheduling this. We've set it up as a Zoom meeting. We've set a time. We're going to add conferencing and I'm just going to pick a Zoom meeting or I can actually just go down here and I can press same thing. I can just press make it a Zoom meeting and it'll do the same thing. Now, if I click on my calendar event after I've made it, that's where I'm going to get this link. Um, and I'm just going to copy the link. So I'm going to highlight the whole join Zoom meeting link. I'm going to press copy, command C, and I'm going to open up Google Classroom. I'm just going to go over to my Google Apps and I'm going to click on Classroom. I have a lot of classes, but I set up a kind of a test class. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your classwork tab, create, and I can just choose an assignment. And I'm going to add a link for this Zoom meeting. That's the link that I copied from my calendar earlier. So go copy that link, paste it here, and press add link. And now there's going to be a launch meeting Zoom there. So I'm going to put Zoom meeting. It's my title. I'm not really going to have instructions. I'm just going to leave it ungraded and I'm just going to press assign. Here's my family and friends that I've added to my Google Classroom. And we're going to actually join the Zoom meeting and then we're going to wait for them to join as well. So when I launch it, it's going to give me this prompt. If I've already installed Zoom on my computer, it's going to just tell me open zoom.us. 
um, for you if you haven't installed Zoom yet, and this is different than the Chrome extension. Remember, you need to install the Chrome extension and then also you might be prompted right now to install Zoom as an application. Download it and open it up. Again, make sure you give permission for the microphone and the camera. We're gonna run into some problems. Let me show you what all these windows look like. So I've got, here's my sort of main feeding screen. This is gonna show what I'm actually broadcasting and the different participants. Right now we've got people joining into the chat and nobody's turned on video yet, but my dad here has just joined in. And I'm going to have a setting down here on my participants tab. You've clicked on manage participants and at the very bottom on the right, there's this little more button. And that button we can click on and it will say mute participants on entry. And I'm actually gonna turn that on in case anybody comes in with their microphones on and maybe there's some feedback or they are talking and I'm trying to present something in the middle of my lesson. I don't want students coming in um, with their microphones on. I'm also gonna uncheck allow participants to unmute themselves. This is useful, especially if you're teaching younger kids or if the flow of that lesson is gonna benefit from not having a bunch of students talking to each other within the chat or talking over each other and you just want one presenter talking and then you wanna be able to control when you ask for questions or when you allow students to have discussions. So I'm gonna uncheck that as well. I've also got an option to allow participants to rename themselves. If you've ever played Kahoot before with students, um, you can see that that might not be a good idea. And a chime that you can play when somebody enters or exits um, and the ability to lock the meeting, which actually makes sure that people can't join at a certain point. Now, there's a few other boxes. We've gone through this participants tab and all of the options on there. And there's already a lot more than on Google Hangouts. Um, I also have this option down here, um, the chat box. And so if we open that, there's a chat on the side and here I can chat messages. So that message is gonna go out to everybody. And here I can choose who I'm chatting to. I can send specific messages to specific students. And now my chat also has options. Just at the bottom of the chat, there's another section. And there you can actually pick um, to save the chat, you can choose the participant can chat with um, nobody, only the host or everybody publicly. And so I can actually pick who the participants in this chat can chat with. Um, and that's useful because you might, again, only want them to be able to ask you questions and not be asking questions of everybody else. Right now it's set to host only so they can send me questions, but not other people. All right, um, other options right here. We've got a share screen button that's at the very center. And so if I wanna share my screen, I can actually pick the desktop that I wanna share. I can pick to share something on an iPhone or an iPad. I can pick any of my windows that are open to share those. And there's also this really useful feature called a whiteboard um, that if you don't have something like an iPad, you can share with students something that you're quickly drawing. So if you are teaching physics and you wanna draw a quick free body diagram, you can share that on a whiteboard and ask students questions. I don't know why your normal force would be going off to the right, but um, there's an example for you. If you go to this little arrow that's next to the share screen button, you can pick so that only one participant can share screen at a time. And if you're teaching, you might not want students all sharing what's on their screen at that moment while you're presenting something. Finally, here's one of the last features that I want to show you. And this is something that I think a lot of YouTube videos have left out is this breakout rooms option. And this breakout rooms option doesn't actually show up for you if you just downloaded Zoom. So go back to the Zoom website, you're logged in, you're going to my account. And from here, you can actually go all the way down under personal, go all the way down to settings. The first option in meeting advanced settings, there's an option for breakout room and you want to turn this on. And you're also going to want to check allow host to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. That's going to let you set these up before you even make the meeting. So if I go back to Zoom, I've got this option for breakout rooms and we're going to test it out. So if I click on breakout rooms, it's going to give me an option to assign four participants into two different rooms. And it's going to do this automatically for me. I'm going to click create breakout rooms. And it's gonna give me a screen that says, okay, Kyle and Martina, they're both moved into one breakout room together, breakout room one. 
Um, we've got my brother and my dad and they're going into another breakout room. And so um, you can move these around. So you could actually say, okay, actually I want Kyle in this room. I don't think I want, you know, those two students together. I don't think they're going to be very productive or whatever. And you can move these around. And once you have it set up how you want, you're going to click open all rooms. So they're going to get an option on their screen that tells them to go join the breakout room. And I can go join those rooms to check in on them. So maybe I want to say like, okay, so you've got 10 minutes to talk to your group to come up with, you know, what action steps you would take and what kind of budget you could estimate that would be required. Um, and so you would throw them into these rooms and you could join them to go check on them. So I'm going to go join breakout room one and move my windows over again. So now I'm in breakout room one. If I now type, it says to everyone, but it's actually just going to be this group that I made. So I'm saying, hi team. It's saying to everybody, but it's, but people in the other groups that we set for the breakout rooms, they can't see me. This is almost like a completely separate zoom call now, which is kind of nice because you might just want to be helping out that team at their, like at their virtual table and then going back to the room. If you do need to message something to the whole group, there's a broadcast button. All right. Hi, everybody. We are going to close the rooms. Finish your last thoughts with your discussion partners. I've written a message and now I can press broadcast. That's actually going to send it to both of these rooms at the same time so they can see it. Okay, now, like I said, um, let me just sum this up. I'm actually going to leave this call. I'm going to close all the rooms and it gives them 60 seconds to get back into the main room. All right, and I'm going to end my meeting over here. The most important thing to get out of this is that Zoom is a platform that is really set up for tons of features that you can use teaching and actually understanding how to use those is going to take some practice, but hopefully this video gives you the run through of the basic layout.